Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess today. I'm playing E4 as per usual. I've got a J2O here. This is not a sponsored video, but I love J2Os. Oh, yes. They play E5. We will play Knight F3 here. Knight C6, and then, of course, D4, the Scotch opening. Now, will they take? We will take inwards. Will they play Bishop C5? Maybe Knight F6? What is that? Knight to E5. I think I've seen this, like, once before. Honestly, it makes no sense to not just play F4. Because, okay, for instance, you go check, I can just play g3. There is no scary aspect to that check. Now we have this kind of like off-center claim to the center with complete tempo. And it's like they're playing Alakine's defense, but in reverse. This is extremely dumb. I do not think knight e5 is a good move. Honestly, I think we should carry on developing, as usual. Potentially f5 is going to be a move, but then the knight gets back into e5. And... I don't really know if that makes a whole lot of sense. Maybe bishop f4. Like, it could be playable, but... I think I'd prefer to sort of keep these pawns as they are for now. Um, honestly? Queen f3. That's how I'm going to defend this knight. Queen f3. Some kind of bishop c4 and castle's king side to make the most of this potentially soon-to-be-open f-file. But I quite like starting with just playing a3. Just asking a question of this bishop. Do you want to trade off... For my knight, or are you going to skulk back? I don't know if that's actually a word. Uh, to a5, and then you know, allow me to continue provoking it. So they, of course, trade. Now I have a bishop pair in an open position. Like our position feels like it's very strong now. Now I'm going to play bishop d3 and stabilize my e pawn because, of course, the knight has attacked it. I would imagine they're going to castle kingside, and honestly. It looks so much more tempting to me to just play bishop d2 and castle queenside so that I can then play like h4, h5, you know, f5, g4. Like, I can just launch all my pawns at this castle king. They do castle. Okay. You know what, guys? I'm just so tempted that I'm, we're going to do it. I don't want bishop e3 because then there's maybe knight g4 attacking my bishop. So bishop d2, there's no need to be confrontational, really. And we can step back to f3. We have a bishop pair. We have... Uh, the ability to castle queenside and we have this lovely already uh, pretty dominant control of the squares over on the uh, king side so they attack the knight we are going to castle if you take this knight i think that's a weak move because you take this knight i'm getting an open g file to attack you with and if you don't i'm going to play h3 and if you go back then it's g4 and it's good knight to your bishop yeah they're going to take my knight here most likely and i'm going to be very happy about that there we go because this open g file I mean, this has to be a very useful attacking resource. Now, they start their own kind of attack over here. I'm just less convinced by theirs, I'll be completely honest. Our attack looks so much more exciting. Let's start with h4. h4 and h5 kind of has to be a good idea. We're going to force the knight back to e7, for instance. If you go here, I can take, take, take. Rook b8. Maybe I just drop the queen back to c3 or something. I don't know. Like, yes, there's something a little bit scary here. Okay. Right. That feels like the wrong option. Because now you're not playing this. Which was going to sort of break open my king. Now you're just going to make me move my bishop. Which I, I really don't mind doing. I'll just step back. It's not like it was necessarily protecting anything. And I think... Uh, ooh, that was across... Across into h5. Okay. Interesting. I'm playing f5. These knights are just tempo to push forward with. You go into e5 here, I can play f4 probably. Yeah, so they go into f4, wow. No way. I kind of want to lift my rook, because I mean, at some point I want to stack rooks on the g-file. But right now, they are threatening to not only take my bishop, but to win my queen. So we do have to defend this. So we, we will go rook h2 to start by defending that. Then rook g1 is going to be an idea, which will immediately threaten checkmate, by the way. With the queen from c3, which is actually strangely well placed there. So they do take, we'll take here. I don't really understand this. I do not understand because this knight is so dumb and sidelined. If I play rook g2 here and you trade queens, you can't really play g6, can you? Maybe you can. I don't really want to trade queens, if I'm being honest. I'd much rather keep the queens for the attack. I'm playing queen e3. 
The main idea being to just vacate c3 so that I can bring my bishop to that square. And if this bishop slices this diagonal with a rook on g1, maybe even a rook on g2, like the, there is no way this is ending well for my opponent. Oh my days. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not going to end well. This knight is very poorly positioned right now. And my bishop is soon to be the goat. So, okay, now the knight moves. I mean, I want to play this anyway. You can't go here. You can't go here. You can just go back to h5, but you've just given me this move for free. I, there are no other moves. You've got to go back to h5. Or you defend the knight. But the only way to do that is with the... No, there's literally no way to do that because we control both of these squares. Or you could go queen e5, I guess, but then f4. Or the queen takes the pawn. Right, I guarantee that's a terrible move. And we're going to try and prove why. So, the queen takes the pawn. We don't care about this pawn. We care about having open files for our rooks to attack the king. I'm now going to play rook to g1. Now, you have to move this knight back to h5, of course, because there was just no way to defend uh, the piece again. Now, we have fully stacked rooks here with tempo. And, I mean, I mean, probably queen h6 is a move, honestly. Okay, ways to pile on the pressure. Probably I can play rook takes g7 here and I'm still winning. With some combination of bishop c3, queen d4, maybe f6, maybe even queen h6. But if I want to keep piling on the pressure, I feel like it's got to just be bishop c3 straight away. But then maybe you play f6. And maybe that sort of shuts down my attack a little bit. So what about queen h6? Guys, we're playing queen h6. Look at this. The pawn can't take the queen because of this pin, of course. Okay, this is good. If you play g6, the dark squares are looking beyond weak. Yeah, I think you kind of had to play g6, but surely now it's bishop c3. I mean, I want to take here at some point, but I feel like bishop c3 first. Actually, I don't threaten checkmate because the knight weirdly holds. But I will have, like, rook g5 at some point. Okay. If I take... They play takes like this. Hold up, can I just sack a rook? Takes, 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 check. Here. Oh, guys. Guys, this is so powerful. Takes, takes, sacrifice a rook. Takes, queen takes with check, king here. That's checkmate. Queen h6 is checkmate. Oh my days. I mean, yeah. Playing g6 is never going to end well. Um, so I think queen h6 probably was the right move to keep the attack going. Because g6, I'm actually pretty sure, just leads to forced mate. Like, right now we're threatening checkmate on h7. So they have to take. Now, we sack the rook. Demolition sacrifice to blow up this king. Now, you, you kind of have to take, right? Well, you could go here i guess they do go there if they've taken we go queen takes king here and, and mate so uh that would not have ended well so they, they obviously now play king here but oh guys guys bishop c3 look at the long range piece you're going to need to put something on f6 and if it's the knight we go check mate if it's the rook oh they just resign they just resign. Oh, look at this. Let's look at the analysis. Okay, so here we are in the analysis. Uh, four inaccuracies, proud of all of those, and 93% accuracy. We'll take it. We will take it. A bit of a mess around here, though, apparently. Let's go through the game. So E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, D4, E D4, Knight E4. This is the very standard scotch. Um, the engine likes the Knight F6 reply. Bishop C5 is also a move. Uh, you can even get away with playing D6 or taking the Knight and playing D6. There are many ways you can play this. Knight to e5 is not one of them. I don't know if this is theory. It's just not even slightly theory. I mean, how often is this played in the Leeches database? 3% of the time people are playing that. Wow, it's such a dumb move. Okay, did we punish it correctly? Let's uh, turn on the engine. f4 seems reasonable. Knight here, knight c3, bishop here. Oh, it wants knight f5. Probably going after g7 with check. That's pretty insane. And then it wants, it wants if knight f6 check here, it wants me to go to h5. 
I'm presuming takes takes and then the dark squares just weak. Wow. Okay, instead I went queen f3, which seems playable. 1.2 on the eval. We don't hate it. A3, I kind of let my advantage slip away a bit, which is, yeah, so this was an inaccuracy. I should have castled kingside, but honestly, the plan of just castling queenside and, uh, oh, the engine prefers black here, really? Even with my bishop here. Maybe they can just put insane pressure on, uh, on e4. What do I do about that? I don't actually know what I would do about that. It wants e5, or it wants just castles and I lose that. Okay, either way, once we sort of made it out of the opening and got castled queenside, I think this is the point. Yeah, everything's up from here. So, even though the engine slightly prefers me castling kingside, the idea of castling queenside is, of course, to attack the bishop, to get the open g file, to then push the pawn. We drop the bishop back, although it wanted h5. Oh, I should have considered that. Takes, takes. And if you take here, what do I take on uh, h7? Yeah. So h5 takes, takes, you recapture and I take here and it prefers this. I guess I get the open h file. But moving the bishop back isn't completely horrible. Again, inaccuracy. Push forward, knight in here, and then we lift the rook to defend the bishop. It wants bishop f1. I kind of like lifting the rook. Um, but again, I think that is all our inaccuracies in the past now. Queen to e3 seems to be a very reasonable move. Because then, yeah, knight here, rook g2, you take that. Other rook to g1, yeah. This idea of rook g2, other rook to g1 getting this g-file with the king on. I mean, if your rooks are stacked on the same file as your opponent's king, you know you're doing something right. Um, and then obviously they just have to move the knight here. Queen h6, was that the best move? It was the best move. Ooh. Ooh. And if I'd played something like bishop c3, there is f6, and it kind of shuts down my attack a little bit more, maybe gives some space for the king to run, maybe gives some space for rook f7. But uh, yeah, queen h6 straight away, ruthless stuff. And after g6... It is mate in seven because we take and then after they take we sacrifice the rook best move and uh, let me just quickly show that if they accept that sacrifice we go check here and here or if the knight blocks queen g7 mate so of course after g6 i mean you can't sort of blame them for playing g6 if they'd gone here uh, i assume we could have just taken the knight honestly and then played bishop c3 although it wants you to go here first and if here oh that's disgusting and then bishop c3 wow yeah okay that makes sense and if here we go here here then take then you block then we take then here then probably this right yeah wow wow and we're literally just gonna do this and deliver checkmate wow but yeah finding that rook sack is quite pleasant and then here oh i had a queen sack i had a queen sack bishop c3 is beautiful and i still probably i mean i don't know if i'd have played it again because this queen tag is pretty interesting but again just showcasing the weakness of this diagonal is pretty fun um because then you know if they go knight here this is mate uh if they go rook here then i'd assume i would just take it yeah takes and if you're gonna play queen takes then i can take it and if you're gonna play knight takes uh then again queen g7 will be mate but the idea the engine sees here is queen h7 king has to take and then checkmate like this which is absolutely filthy. But either way, our opponent resigned after bishop c3, a vicious attacking game and making use of the open g file. Thanks so much for watching. Hopefully that taught you guys just how strong doubling your rooks in front of your opponent's king can be. Uh, so much so that we could have sacrificed one of those rooks and then the queen uh, for a checkmate, which would have been absolutely disgusting but thanks so much for watching if you enjoyed like comment subscribe all that stuff that helps out the channel if you really enjoy my content check out the channel memberships offer and if you're interested in personal one-on-one -on -one chess coaching let me know in the comments i'll put your name on the list uh, this is something that i'm building at the moment it's taking a while because i want to do it properly I'm trying to set up like a website it's going to be pretty awesome and yeah i look forward to working with some of you more closely in the future but thanks so much for watching as per usual another brutal attacking game see you in the next one goodbye